Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jason. Welcome to the Big Brain Busters. So in this video, I am going to take you through an introduction to organic chemistry. With that being said, let's jump into it. Okay, so what is organic chemistry? So organic chemistry is just simply the study of carbon compounds. Okay, so when we talk of carbon compounds, we simply mean carbon compounds such, uh, such as we have alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, alkanoes, uh, alkanoics, etc. Because there are other organic compounds that I haven't mentioned. And as we are going to uh, learn in organic chemistry, I am going to take you through all um, the necessary things that you need to know in organic chemistry. Okay, so this is junior this is a senior secondary level so this is great four okay so but if you are taking a levels well um this would be too simplified for you okay so as i have said this is the study of carbon compounds and when we talk of carbon compounds we simply mean those that belong to alkenes alkenes alkynes and as, as i have said already so now this is just simply an example of what i've given you here let me just get my pointer so this is this is um this is methane here and this is um ethene and this is ethyne so these are some of the examples that i've just put up here and they belong to these organic these are these belong to uh, these organic compounds here so now is it all organic comp is it all carbon compounds that we study under uh, organic chemistry not really. So whenever whenever we are studying organic chemistry, we exclude um, carbon compounds such as carbonates, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and carbon disulfide, and other carbon compounds. So it's not all carbon compounds that we study when we are dealing with organic chemistry. We just deal with specific carbon compounds, and of which I am going to show you which ones you must focus on when studying organic chemistry. Okay, we move on. So these are some of the things that you will be um, taking note of. So these, these are the things that you'll be dealing with, that you'll be seeing when looking at organic chemistry. So as you can see, this is the uh, structure of methane. This is the structure of ethane. And this is the structure of um, butene. And uh, these are some of, this is now under organic chemistry too, where we're going to be looking at other structures. So this is a dicarbo this is a dicarboxylic acid uh, you know um, monomer so we are going to look at everything here so the methane and everything we're going to look at it but here in this video we're just going to focus on an introduction to this lecture okay so now we go to our next thing which is hydrocarbons so what are hydrocarbons or what is a hydrocarbon? This is just simply a compound which consists of carbon and hydrogen elements only. So hydro for hydrogen, carbon for carbon element. So hydrocarbon, a hydrocarbon should only contain carbon and hydrogen elements only in its structure. Okay. So some of the examples of hydrocarbons are simply methane. As you can see, there is only carbon and hydrogen. And so as ethene, butene, pentene, there are a lot of hydrocarbons that we are going to look at our way together. Okay, so this uh, the uh, structure of methane. This is the structure of ethene. This is the structure of butene. And there is a structure of pentene there. Okay, so now we move on. So how about homologous series? So what is a homologous series or what are homologous series? So homologous series this is just simply a family of similar organic compounds. So what we mean by similar organic compounds, we simply mean um, a family, a group of compounds that belong to one family. Okay, so that's a homologous series. So um, it's like whenever, whenever we are studying homologous series, these are simply compounds that belong to one family and they studied them and simply they have certain characteristics that make them to belong to one family. Okay, so that's what we mean by homologous series. Are we together? So an example of um, examples of homologous series, uh, you can have the same alkenes. So alkenes is a homologous family or homologous series uh, of which these alkenes, they contain other um, 
families, okay, they contain um, homologues in them. So each member of the homologous series is known as a homologue. Are we together? So as you can see here, we have our kin, our kins, our kins, our kinds, and uh, these other uh, homologous series. So the thing is, under our kins, you find that you will have homologues. So each member in the family is, is called a homologue. So now let's list down the homologues of our kins. So let me just write our kins there. Okay. So when we look at our, our kins, we'll have homologues such as methane. And I am going to tell you or perhaps show you how to know which homologue belongs to which family. So methane, ethane, okay, we'll have ethane there. Uh, don't mind my handwriting, I'm getting used to the mouse. So methane, ethane, propane, so propane, etc. So these are some of the homologues under alkenes, okay, under alkenes. Then let's look at some homologues under um, alkenes. So under alkenes, you find that we we'll have homologues, so this is the alkenes this is the homologous family alkenes okay like that under alkenes we we'll have um a thin so this is the first homologue in alkenes we we'll have a thin then we we'll have propene okay we we'll have propene and um butene yeah, I'll just write three. So these are some of the homologues under <coughs> alkene. So this is the alkene is the homologous series, is the homologous family or series. Then these are the homologues. So each member under these homologous families is known as a, a homologue. Okay, then uh, so as alkynes, alcohols, alkanoics, which are also known as carboxylic acids. All right, we move on. So I'm going to show you how to know which homologue in the incoming videos. We're going to talk about each and every homologous uh, series or family. Okay. So what are the characteristics of homologous series? So the characteristics, some of the characteristics of the homologous series is that, number one, members in the family have got the same general formula. So that's one of the most important things when studying um, homologous series you must know their general formula so these are some of the characteristics that you must know about homologous series is that they contain the same general formula so whenever you want to derive any homologue each homologue remember we said the homologue is the member of the homologous family so whenever you want to derive the formula of any homologue in a homologous family you can use the general formula okay we'll again show you how to um, derive that so these are some of the um these are some of the examples so alkenes remember alkenes is a homologous family so this is the general formula for alkenes okay this is the general formula for alkenes for alkenes this is the general formula for alkenes for alkynes this is the general formula for alkanos this is the general formula remember alkanos are also known as alcohols and they have a functional group which is a hydroxyl group there then alkanoics which are also known as carboxylic acids this is their general formula and this is their functional group so this entire thing is their general formula okay this entire thing don't forget to put the functional group all right so um this is how it is so uh just a brief uh thing on how to use these um these general formulas the thing is let's say alkenes so the n here in the formula stands for the number of carbons okay so the N stands for the number of carbons. So let's try to derive a, a member, a homologue of the alkenes, which has only one carbon. So what we do is we use the same general formula like that. Okay. CnH2n plus 2. Please don't mind my handwriting here. So we are deriving a homologue which has only one carbon. So we'll put only one carbon. Remember, we don't put a one there. So we'll just leave it like that. So CN, then let's say we'll say H2. So, okay, just for, you know, uh, learning sake, 
let me put the number one here since we are deriving but at the end of the formula we don't have to put the one we don't have to show it so cn which is one h2 then n which is one as well plus two from your mathematics you get to you know compute everything here so we'll say c then the one is out because we already know that it's already one then c n h then two times one which is two two plus two which is four so the formula for methane is c h four like that and if we were to draw this guy this is how you draw methane the formula for methane this is methane with four hydrogens and all this is a covalent bond so like that so this is how you use the general formula the n stands for the number of carbons so if the if we needed two carbons we put two three carbons like that etc etc i hope you get it so let's go to our next thing so we are going to look at another property of um homologous uh, family so another property is that they show a change in their physical property with increasing number of carbons. So with their increasing number of carbons, you find that they show a change in their physical property. So as you know, when we talk of physical properties, we simply mean physical properties such as uh, in gaseous state, right? Gases, then liquids, liquids, then and solids. Okay, solids, like that. So they show a gradual change in their physical properties. All right. So now, the thing is, what we mean by they show a physical property in their increasing number of carbons. So remember that in their general formula, we said the number, the n stands for number of carbons, right? So as the n, as we increase the number of carbons in the in the formula, in their stru in their structure formula even their physical property changes because now they are becoming more denser. So you find that the first members of the homologous families, they are in gaseous state. Then as the number of carbons increases, it will change. The, the, the physical state of the homologous families will change to liquid. Then as the number of carbons are increasing, maybe let's say we reach somewhere 50, 20, so it will change like uh, the members that have a lot of carbons they have they'll be in, in a solid state all right so that's what we mean by this property here okay so as you can see each member in the family differs uh, to the next by ch2 okay so what we mean is that let's say um let's say the methane that we had derived at first so this is our kenza so these are alkenes. So the homologous family here are alkenes. So here, what we mean by each member of the family differs to the next by CH2. So in short, here, what we mean is that for you to derive, to get the, the next member in the homologous family, you just add this guy, CH2. Okay. Then this is not a chemical reaction, by the way. I'm just um, adding this 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 here because that's the difference from one member to the other okay so this is in our case and in other also in other homologous families this is the difference the difference is just simply ch2 so when we put c so meaning that we'll have two carbons and four four hydrogens two hydrogens so which will make us which will make what six hydrogens then next thing again we add ch2 like that when we add ch2 again we we'll have we have what uh, three carbons and eight eight what eight hydrogens so this is what we mean by each member in the family differs to the next by ch2 even when you use the general formula you still come up with these same formulas like that okay and they also uh, they differ from each other by a relative molecular formula which is the mister of 14 so as you know that ch2 ch2 when you want to derive its relative molecular formula okay relative molecular formula you find that you have two by one there and you have one by 12 
so when you calculate this whole thing it should give you a relative molecular formula of 14 so that's what we mean by it differs by a relative molecular formula of 14 so that's the difference between one member of the homologous family to the next member i hope that's clear then another property is that all members in the family have the same method of preparation okay so the methods of preparation what we mean by method of preparation is just simply how we prepare these homologous uh, these homologs in a homologous series so let's say for example if you get alkanes okay if you get alkanes alkanes under alkanes we have um under alkanes we have methane okay we have methane like i had mentioned earlier we have ethane like that uh don't mind my slowness so methane ethane so these guys have got these guys if you were to prepare them in the lab they should have the same method of preparation okay now like as you know these guys uh, th in the lab you can prepare them in many ways but the way you prepare one member is the way you you will prepare the other member in that manner all right so the way you prepare maybe um ethane is how you will prepare propane okay in that manner propane like that all right okay then all members oh, oh oops we have written where the notes are okay my bad so all members in the family have the same chemical property as they have the same functional group so they have the same chemical property all members in the family so um as you know that the chemical property is what determines the homologous family these are some of the characteristics of the homologous families they have the same chemical property okay so what, by what we mean by they have the same chemical property it simply means that they have the same functional group and since they have the same functional group and since they have the same functional group so that determine that makes them to have the same chemical property okay so for example again alkenes alkenes their functional group is that they have a one they have a single carbon to carbon bond okay so they have this the, the the carbon to carbon bond here is a single bond it's not a double bond but it's a single bond then when you come to alkenes alkenes these guys will have a double bond on their carbon to carbon bond here then when you come to alkynes okay alkynes so this is the functional group for each homologous family the functional group for alkenes functional group for alkenes then the functional group for alkynes is that they have a triple bond here okay then for alcohols is that they have alcohols the alcohols they will have um they'll have uh, oh okay i've just put ol like that to denote alcohols so they'll have oh then for alkanoics oics they'll have a functional group of cooh all right this is their functional group like that in that manner i hope you understand this property all right so these are some of the um, properties of homologous families then now let's jump to the next thing so now functional group what is a functional group so a functional group is just simply a group which determines the chemical properties of organic compounds so as we are from mentioning right now so they have the same functional group right so this is what we mean by fun a functional group this is what we mean so as you can see here so this is a table showing us uh, an organic families and yeah it's showing the organic family and the functional group and the name of that uh, functional group all right so under alkenes I've, i think i've just briefly talked about it so now under alkenes this is a organic family then the functional group is a single carbon to carbon covalent bond then alkenes you have a double bond in the carbon to carbon co covalent bond 
alkynes i said also you have a triple bond which is uh, on the carbon to carbon covalent bond then al alkanos or alcohols you have a hydroxyl group there which is the name then alkanoics or carboxylic acids that's the other name you have a cooh as you what as you um as your functional group which is a carboxyl group so this is how you draw a carboxyl group okay so that's much about a functional group so the functional group just determines the chemical properties of that of that organic compound all right so since you have a double bond so they will have a specific uh type of property that will determine that okay this organic compound or this homologue belongs to alkenes then when you have a homologue which has a double bond it will also determine it will also tell to say uh, this homologue belongs to alkenes when you see a carbon a, an organic compound which has a triple bond just know okay it will belong to alkynes and and so forth and so on then now let's look at the nomenclature of organic compounds so when we talk of nomenclature of organic compounds we simply mean a way of naming organic compounds okay so uh when in organic chemistry there is a way in which organic compounds are actually names named there like it is a standardized way of naming organic compounds and this standard way of naming organic compounds right it is actually by the um by by, by a certain organization which is um abbreviated as i u p a c yeah so this is like international union uh, international union of pure and applied chemistry yeah so this is the organization that brings about the way of naming organic compounds all right so this is the organization that came about with the rules on how to name these organic compounds right so when naming these organic compounds depending on um the type depending on the uh, homologous family so the prefix so you have a prefix and the suffix that's how you name the organic compounds according to a prefix and the suffix right so when you have the prefix to say meth meth means one compound eth means two uh, two carbons actually meth one carbon eth two carbons prop three carbons but four carbons and so on and so forth as you can see from the table here until to the 10 um okay for this lesson i'll end up to 10 then um but this is not where organic compounds and they can go as far as 50 carbons and they have their own specific names but for now uh, for your own level i uh, i would um advise that you know you master this to say up to 10 that's deck okay then this is the prefix so whenever you were well, the first name the first part of the organic compound you start with the prefix then the suffix will come from the organic family the homologous family so whether it is alkenes so whether it is alkenes alkenes alkynes alcohols carboxylic acids or esters so you get the suffix at the end of the organic family so for alkenes you get n alkenes you get in as you can see from this side alkyne you get ein alcohols you get ano so as you can see there carboxylic acids you get anoic then esters you get anoet so you find that these names of so when when a, an organic compound is an alkane it will end with n like that in that order all right so example let's let's uh, look at an example on how to name an organic compound so these are some of the examples what name is given to a hydrocarbon that belongs to the alkane family with three carbon chains so they're telling us to say it belongs to an alkane so we know that our suffix our suffix will end with n and it has how many carbons it has three carbons so since it has three carbons and we said that when it has three carbons okay when we have three carbons meaning that it is called prop right prop so since it has prop so our answer here is that it will be prop 
this will be our prefix since it has three carbons and since it belongs to the alkane family so meaning that it will end with n so meaning that our carbon compound here is propane okay so go ahead and maybe pause this video and try out this other example so what name is given to the hydrocarbon belonging to the alkene family having seven carbons so seven carbons we said um, seven the prefix will be hept okay hept then since it is belo belonging to the alkene family so we'll get the suffix in so meaning it to be heptene okay heptene then what name is given to a five carbon compound belonging to the alcohol family alcohol family don't forget this so since it is belonging to the alcohol family and it is a five carbon so here uh, we'll have a five carbon compound it starts with the prefix pent pent okay and since it belongs to the alcohol family so meaning it to be called pentanol in that manner so this is just how you juggle around with these names let's go to the next thing i think which is um the last thing in this lesson so what do i need to know when studying organic chemistry in the next series so whenever you are studying uh, each homologue because we are going to study each uh, homologous family like alkenes alkenes alkynes so all these uh, we are supposed to know their general formulas after you know the general formula you must know how to derive the isomers so the general formula how to uh, derive other homologues using the general formulas then you must know how to derive the isomers of those homologues you must also know their method of preparation and you must also know their application or uses all right so these are some of the things that you're supposed to know as you are studying the homologous families in the next videos we're going to cover it uh, i think for now this is where we end thank you very much i know it, um, it's been quite a video about uh, 30 minutes almost to 30 minutes but uh, i hope you enjoyed and have learned something and uh, tell us what you would want us to cover in the next series of videos thank you very much don't forget to like share and sub subscribe to our youtube channel thank you